This is the Surly Grognards for October 7th, to November 7th, 2016. This is Peter Bowman, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Eric Carlson. How are you doing tonight, Eric? I'm good. Most excellent. So, it's been a little while since we've had a proper topic. <laughs> well, not that long, I don't think, but, you know... Actually, what was our, what was last long one enough? Honestly, like, we're bad at this. <laughs> what? No, no, no. We're not terrible at this. We're not disorganized, and you know, did... leaving the topic last ten minutes before we actually have to start recording. You know, <laughs> did we actually have a topic last time? I don't remember. Hang on. I think it was just a shoot the shit. Type well, of actually, video. we did. We last time we talked about Fallout. We talked about the Fallout franchise. Oh right, right. I remember now. I didn't. I. It's not like I had to look it up. I remember totally. Remember what the last episode we recorded was. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, totally, I totally yeah, remember that. Clearly. I would never forget that off the top of my. Oh my god, I'm terrible. Uh, <laughs> anywho, um, this week we actually have. Uh, we're going to be talking a bit about a topic sent into us by our friend Word on the Wind. Yay! Word had a thing for us. Uh, she writes, Hey there, Eric, Mecca and Eric. I recently had an odd situation develop in my Thursday Pokemon tabletop game. To keep a long-winded explanation brief, my character's plot arc that was settled with the GM from the start of the game was that she was supposed to bond with legendary, legendary Pokemon. Uh, read gods. However, as the first major, major plot arc came to a close, something unexpected happened. The hooks that I was supposed to catch ended up being caught by another player, derailing my player, my character's arc and delaying the contact with the legendaries that when the contact with the legendaries was supposed to be made. Furthermore, yet another character who had ne never had any such designs at all has ended up bonding with a musical legendary by virtue of being a musical character and pursuing a song. Well, none of this has been deliberate, to, deliberate spite on the part of the GM or the players, and has been all been basically just how been just how things ended up. I can't help but feel what makes my character special have been kind of ruined. Have you two ever run into a situation where planned character arcs have been unwittingly or deliberately usurped by other players? And other than dialogue, other than dial, a dialogue with the rest of the crew, what can be done to handle such a situation? Abandoned by the gods, word on the wind. <laughs> well, let me see here. Does getting killed by another player count? <laughs> Technically, yes. That's a pretty dramatic um, character, possible character arc ender. It was towards the end of the game, so I'm pretty sure it was going to result... One of us is going to kill the other anyway. Uh -huh. um, the, the story involved in, uh, is the uh, an old Dark Heresy game. Uh, Basically, investigators working for the Inquisition in the world of Warhammer 40,000. All right. And um, the way the... As the game had, had progressed, one character's um, psyker um, was, was slowly starting to discover the possibility that they might actually be a star child, which is basically the god... One of the god emperor's direct descendants. Okay. Um, th this had been... And um, meanwhile, my character had been dealing with some early on chaos corruption and constant fuckery from a chaos cultist. So we can see exactly where this is going. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, the, the big end of the arc was discovering a, a gigantic um, stasis arc in, in a, a, a pocket uh, uh, of space um, warp overlay that was that was completely still and it being filled with a bunch of pre-imperial citizens and us arguing about what to do with them do we kill them do we leave them there do we set them free on the galaxy the um the tech priest in the group was um the third party wanted to leave them there so he could study the technology and further comprehend how long-term stasis affects people in, in this kind of weird situation. Because, of course he did. He's a tech priest. That's what they do. Right. <laughs> the Psycho wanted to, to set them loose into the galaxy to be, because they, they are now loyal Imperial citizens, clearly. Never mind, they've never even heard of the Imperium or understand the, any of this stuff. Um, and they can bring a lot of good, fresh ideas to, to help with the stagnation. Um, because it's Nothing's really changed in 10,000 years because it's, War it's Warhammer 40,000. Right. 
my character was like, no, that's a terrible idea. They'll bring bad, bad, dangerous ideas like democracy and equality with them, and that's that'll destroy the fabric of the, the Imperium. Cream is a very bad place. Uh-huh. <laughs> so the the end result was okay. I'm going to cause a failure in the the stasis program, so that they all die, and it's resolved anyway, and it, we don't have to worry about this. The tech priest gets to study the technology. Th- there's no risk uh, uh, of contamination by the, these terrible pre uh, pre Imperium ideas. I'm role playing. This is, uh, I know how evil this is. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and the psyker is like, you know what? He's been acting funny, and he's not here right now. I'm gonna go check on the stasis pods, and he manages to sneak up on me as I'm trying to figure out how to fix uh, how to sabotage it without shooting an auto cannon into it, which is how I sabotage everything. <laughs> this is still one of my characters. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, um, yeah, plasma gun to the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> there well. the fact that this was the whole... Bloodshed was the whole catalyst for the demon that had been hiding here the whole time, and, um, yeah, then a, a fight with a demon happened. That happened to possess my body, and the GM was kind of to let me run. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you're dead. All along. One of us, he figured one of us is going to die at some point, and the right. demon would possess that body. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I'm not sure that but, actually um, is... But yeah, it... it, it de- I, the, the How it derailed was that the, um, the, the character arc for my character was that I really was trying to work through like the dealing with, with the, the, the chaos corruption and the, the demonic influences and becoming a, a right upright standing member of the Imperium and, and actually fighting for what he believed was the greater good. He is an Imperial citizen. It's, it, we think it's evil, but he believes it's the greater good. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, yeah, then I ended up dead and possessed by a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to be fair, it was fucking awesome, and I have no uh, regrets about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. See, I'm trying to think of a time where it's, that sort of thing has happened in any of the games I've been involved in. Mm. And I'm kind of struggling to to think of it, really. Well, gen- to be perfectly fair, Peter, you're really good at making sure everyone has a chance to shine. Well, okay. When, uh, when you're running. <laughs> um, and most of the GMs I played with um, in the past decade and a half have been pr- really good about that. Like, even the, the Dark Heresy game, like that, he was really good at making sure everyone got a chance to shine, and it was part of the conclusion to his story, which... We had already derailed about five times on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is sort of what happens in most campaigns. <laughs> this is true. Um, another example involved me shooting said chaos cult that, that cultist that had been um, trying to corrupt me in a uh, bar. Um, and literally watching him pick up a sheaf of papers and throw them in the treader. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, there go these campaign notes since this guy's dead. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I also don't, I, I, most of the games I've run, I've run or been involved in, nobody's had, like, a really majorly fixed character arc that would be particularly derailable is the thing. Um. If you know what I mean, it's like. Yeah. As a general thing, I'm, my experience has been that, you know, when characters have this, like, most characters have, like, a melodramatic hook, or you know, like something like things like that. There are a general goal, but usually that's something that the you know can morph and change over the time. In my this again, in the stuff I've run, I it varies by group, obviously. Yeah, uh, um, I tend to be very flexible for exactly these reasons. Um, I starting out, I saw this coming, this kind of shit coming, honestly. So I right. tend to be very flexible and, and ill-defined as to my goals. Right. Um, I have had um, instances where I've tied my goals to another player's and had them drop out of the game or change characters and then 
left with, ah, uh, what do I do with this character now? <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, um, generally I, I come up with something. It, sometimes it takes me longer than, than it did not, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't do that anymore either. <laughs> as cool as joint character concepts sometimes can be. Shags and the Leatherman for Star Wars. <laughs> Shags and the Leatherman are an idea I have involving um, a Trend Ocean bounty hunter. Uh, a Trend Ocean bounty hunter and a Wookiee bounty hunter working together as like a, a, an 80s buddy cop comedy duo. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I, mean, I. But like you know, I, what words describing in her email? I, I totally get. Like you know, you're you're coming up with yeah. a character concept, you know, and like the overall arc for the character is this is where the character sort of story is supposed to go. I can see that. Yes. And again, like it's, I totally can see how, like over the course of a campaign, it just ends up not happening, or like other characters, it just like ends up falling in the laps of other characters, and uh, I mean. There's a large part of me that sort of like is that sort of my brain just goes, yeah, but that's kind of what happens in RPGs. There's another part of me that, that like I totally understand like having other people step on your character's toes. Oh god, or, yeah, or or nick the 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 glory that you, you'd been shooting for the whole fucking time. Like I totally understand that it's happened to me all the time, and generally you sort of go, well, fuck. Well done. Um, at least that's what I do. Uh, well, fuck. Well done. Um, I guess I'll move on to this other thing. <laughs> right. But no, my point yeah. is, is that having a, like, is that in that sort of a situation, it's, I, I understand how that'll happen. It's just because having a sort of a major fix or a character story arc for your character is it works really well in fiction, in like you know, in fiction, you know, in in, in books right. and movies and TV shows and all this stuff, or in a computer game. Mm. In a role playing game, the problem is is that and it's the it's the same reason that yet as a game master, your plot almost never survives contact with the players. Right. It's that there are other people who's have their own stories that they're doing also at the same time. So and they get in the way. So and, often dice get in the way, and well, yeah. I mean, and you know, there's there's the random number stuff too. But you know, um, so I mean, it, this is not saying that this is like it's not something to strive for, not to, to have that sort of thing. Far from it, but it's going to happen sometimes. Um, the in some groups, I would even consider doing this, and others, I wouldn't even hesitate. But developing a real rivalry built around like hurt feelings and jealousy between the characters, it, when something like this happens. Oh sure, and, and that could be really cool to the point where you almost become like frenemies. In fact, mm -hmm. you would become frenemies. That 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 would be the thing. You couldn't actually become actual enemies. That although narratively that's where I'd go, except there you know there are meta reasons not to do that. Like you're all playing the game, <laughs> right? I mean, and that could be really interesting to go go with. But there are to be able to do that, you really need to know the people you're playing with really well. Have a game uh, game master that's up to the the challenge of, of that kind of inter character conflict, and yeah. Yeah, th there are only a few people, like, both as players and game masters, uh, I would need a perfect storm to, to try to pull that off. Right. And it would be awesome, but you need a perfect storm to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I mean, it's sort of, it, you know, definitely could lead to, like, even, not even, like, frenemy type thing, but even just, like, rivalry within the part, within mm. the group, which can be interesting. Absolutely. So I, yeah. So I'm just sort of think it's like I, you know, I'm look I'm looking at the situation that we're describing, and um, I, I'm trying to think sort of like how how I would have handled that myself. Well, I I personally think going the the 
the rivalry route, a friendly rivalry like type of deal. Um, I, I don't know the players or anything. I don't know right. how well that'll fly. I don't know how hard I, she should push that. Um, but that would be my inclination. Too many variables right now. I couldn't tell for sure whether I'd do that or not. <laughs> but, yeah, I could see... Here's the thing. I've seen things like this happen in games, and the result is generally murder. But because everyone is on board and thinks it's awesome when that happens, there's no hard feelings. I can totally see that not being the case. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. In the wrong group, that is, like, the worst thing ever. Exactly. Like, you can only bisect your friend's uh, heads with a medical laser once or twice before <laughs> it gets old, also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a game I, a, a game I have heard, that, that is a game I've heard many stories about and never, uh, unfortunately, I was never, never in it, but. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. I think you, you either would have pulled out your hair or really enjoyed it. I, yeah, I'm not sure. It, <laughs> that was the. That was the yeah. Farscape game Eric played in for a yes. long while. For, for those who don't know, um, years and years ago, um, what became my Tuesday night crew um, as people dropped out and other people are added, um, played uh, played in a Farscape game for a long time. And the, the two characters involved were um, Matt's scavenger... Vesser? I want to say Vesser. I think that was the name, if I'm remembering. Yeah. And Roach's um, doctor, whose name I can't remember, which is really weird. Roach's doctor's... His, his evil doctor. So, the... We find that this spooky Eldritch artifact that leads us to treasure, because we're pirates and vagabonds. Like, literally, I was playing a pirate. <laughs> Um, that that leads us to that's supposed to lead us to to treasure or doom. So we're like, let's go get treasure. Matt's character, Matt had been reading a lot about aberrant psychology. Uh -huh. Matt decided he'd wanted to play a, a, a sociopath with psychopathic tendencies, which would only work in this particular group. <laughs> right. <laughs> So he insists that we jump into a, a, a full ASP, uh, AU out of system and then slog it via sublight the rest of the way. So as we're coming out of hyperspace, the two, the literal two pirates, uh, my character and our friends Akeems are like, so do we want to come in and pull AU out? No, they'll take like a week to get into the system. That's stupid. We'll just jump in right at the coordinates. He'll never know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It should be noted that our, both our pirates are not terribly smart and both self-destructively hedonistic. Right. <laughs> so we jump in right at the perfectly legitimate coordinates for any other point of time as Matt's character walks onto the bridge, flips the fuck out, and threatens to blow up the bridge unless we take us immediately out, out of system. How dare you do that? You have no idea what's going on. You're being a paranoid lunatic. I'm going to murder you. <laughs> no, you're not, because I'm blowing up the bridge. Roach's doctor comes in, calms everybody down. Clearly, the artifact is affecting everyone's mind. The, 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 everyone's reacting extremely in extreme ways. I'm going to go back to your rooms, and I, I, I'll figure something out. Okay, we, we go back to our rooms. The, the doctor is very persuasive, and he knows what he's doing. So... Fesser had been problematic in the past because he's a psychopath. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Roach was like, so here's what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to go to Vesser, go to Vesser first. Vesser, I need to do some scans on you. I want to make sure that the, the artifact isn't affecting you adversely. The, you're the best one to go, uh, start with because you were the one that found it. And you were there when everything went to hell. Okay, that makes sense. I will, I will come along and I will do that. And I will sit down in your examination chair. Right. I want you to sit here and be very still. What's uh, dropping now is a scanner that's going to take a, uh, a map of your brain. Okay, excellent. Matt, I'm very sorry. No, Roach, I know what's coming. It's been coming for a while. <laughs> Bisex uh, Vester's head with the medical laser. <laughs> <laughs> At which point, 
the entire crew flips out. There's a gunfight. Um, my character, who to calm down, decided to get high, is having a really bad trip because Matt decides that since he doesn't get to participate being dead in the, the shootout, and I can't participate in the shootout because I'm stoned out of my mind, uh, Matt will play my <laughs> paranoid hallucinations. <laughs> <laughs> completely derailed the plot for two sessions. Everyone, um... Everything free, uh, is like, everyone's freaking out. It's some great role-playing after the, after the first session of it. It's like, that was fucking awesome. Are, is, are things revol- resolved? Not at all. Okay, let's keep <laughs> doing this next session. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And, uh, yeah, and about a quarter to the second session, we finally got everything settled. Okay, everyone agrees. Besser was a psychopath and needed to go. Yes, he tried to blow up the rich. Okay, so everyone agrees to get to loot his stuff. Yes, it's almost certainly booby trapped. He was a paranoid psychopath. <laughs> 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 so we'll worry about that after we figure out what's up with their artifact. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Which unfortunately left Matt without a character for that, um, for th- for the rest of that arc. But he had a lot of fun playing my my delusional um, hallucinations. <laughs> <laughs> like like that was what we decided. It's like, Matt, do, how do you feel about playing Eric's hallucinations for the entire part of the entire arc? I think that's a great idea. I'm going to see if I can get him to kill someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Never would have even tried it in another group. It was a, that was one of those perfect storms. What that oh was. God, yeah. <laughs> no, in the right group, that is absolutely pr- brilliant. But I like the, with the with, like even just one player different, it probably wouldn't have worked. Yeah, no, there there's no way that was going to work without like me, Matt, Roach, Chris, and, and Hakeem. Like it would not have flown otherwise. <laughs> Uh yeah I'm you know I'm I'm again so I I yeah as I said though so I'm try I I I you know back to the question at hand you know in regards to the whole you know you know having your your so I I think it really more comes down to sort of you know. Uh, having your thunder stolen to a certain degree, I think. Sure. And um, because you know, uh, yeah. you're, honestly, my personal experience has been that you know, coming with a character arc is great, but they all, but honestly, given the nature of role playing games, you have to be ready for the to morph and change as you play. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, you're playing with other people and. You can't always predict how what their actions are going to be and how those actions are going to impact the story as a whole. Even how like how the dice will will, will cooperate. Oh like, God, yeah, I'm I'm ignoring that at the, for the moment. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, an example I'm thinking about the dice not cooperating is back in the the fourth Ed game you ran for the Tuesday crew mm-hmm. with my um with my my barbarian prince. Who's trying to come back with the head of a of a great monster to to claim the throne? No one ever let me get the killing blow. It became a comedic uh, gag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We fought a Draculich. Awesome. The fucking cleric binks it on the, binks its last hit point away. Fuck. We fight a, a beholder master. The, uh, the 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 warlock pops it before I, 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 I right before my turn. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened a few times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I remember that. Oh god! Ah, I defeated the great like. The, the, the one time I did get the killing blow was on some sort of friggin' like elemental demon, and it turned to rock. No one's gonna believe that this head, that this rock was something's head. Yeah, that 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 was the case. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> that was that. It was the lava monster demon thing. Yep. You're like, yes, aha! I've defeated it. It's rock. 
fuck. <laughs> I even if I could haul this thing back, and he would have tried. <laughs> yep. All right, so we gotta get it on like this a cart with wheels that will wheel through all these dormant tunnels out over the the drow and uh, through the drought the the plains back to my place uh, through all the drow drought run armies that are after us and um, shut up. <laughs> Fuck, they'll never believe it was real anyways. <laughs> But, yeah, I feel like one thing you have to realize when you're playing role-playing games is that everyone is the special, which means no one is the special. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sort of. I mean, it... I, so, the, the real question is, how? what do you do about it at the point after it's happened? Is the real question. Yeah. Um, and, and you mentioned sort of the going sort of moving into sort of a rivalry thing could work. And with the right group, that does. Um, yep. And of course, talking with each other and working it out between the group of you, as you know, as you know, as in a dialogue is, of course, the correct answer. And yes. you know, <laughs> because as, as we've said, I don't know how many times through the course of this podcast, communication, communication, communication. Yes, you need, you need to talk about this shit. Otherwise, it's going to keep happening, and everyone's going to be all angry and poop-faced, and not enough booze or violence in the world to fix that. Well, right. maybe enough violence. <laughs> well, it'll it, it'll it will it will, it will prob- enough violence will remove that problem and create several new ones. Right, violence solves every problem. It just makes a whole lot more. <laughs> so yeah, um. Uh, I mean, I, I'm trying to think exactly what, at that point, honestly, I think the, there are a couple of ways you can go, ignoring the, the rivalry thing. I mean, and that could still, that could fold into any of these other things I, I'm thinking of right now off the top of my head. Mm. Um, you know, I, I think you could possibly move things along into either sort of have the, your, your sort of, you know, your special thing about bonding with the with the legendary Pokemon thing be more of a slow burn, mm. and yet, yeah, someone else bonded with a different with one with one of the legendaries before you did, but you know that was a unique situation, and you know if you end up bonding you you know if the character your character ends up with bonding with more has a special bond with more of them because that's your character's thing, then I right. Um. I, 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 you know. Well, so I, I don't. Think we should be surprised that the music character bonded the musical legendary. I mean that 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 seems kind of a given. <laughs> right. The only sort of weird question thing is that maybe that shouldn't have happened quite so early. Like that one might maybe shouldn't have the right. game master maybe shouldn't have had that one show up that early. Now they may have had that show up early so that there would be you know. A little tension between you know the legendary Pokemon, the person who's supposed to get bond with the legendaries, and the musical Pokemon trainer. Right. I don't. I don't know why that was done in that situation. I. Uh, it could, it, there are all sorts of possibilities. Right. Like. Like no plan survives contact with the players. It could have been they simply went, "Hey, look, there's a musical legendary. Did I put that? I did put that there. Shit." <laughs> right, but you know, it's like you know, they chose Pokemon that they thought it was co- they this legendary Pokemon for your character to bond with because they thought it was cool. Not thinking about the fact that oh god, wait, there's a person who's all about music. Right. Hmm. I I don't know. I and it's not that's not that important, really. But you know, I at that point, at the point where things have gotten to, you're basically either looking at, I think, sort of delaying a little while, your sort of your your sort of overall arc a bit, and letting the other players sort of you know letting the other players have their moments, you know, their big moments, and you know, shine, and then you get to have yours later, or you know, right? Or you start morphing your what what the what the your overall sort of you know character arc is. And I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know how you would do that because I don't, I don't know enough about the campaign or the players or the characters. No longer shall I form a special bond. I shall 
bring them into bondage to me. I will rule them. <sighs> One possibility. <laughs> and with, again, with the right group of players and the right, right characters, totally viable. Yes. But yes, you could go all dark side about it. Yeah, you could go all dark side. Um, but that's one of those things that you probably should talk about with the other players. Um, yeah. Yeah, the other thing, I'm not sure how much the other players knew about this sort of overall character arc possibility for your, for, for the, for your character. So that also impacts things. Because if they don't know, like, that that was what your, that was sort of the arc, the arc, like the other players don't know that, of course they're going to like, oh, there's a, there's a musical, there's a musical legendary. I'm going to music, my whole thing's about music. Of course I'm going to try to make, make friends with it. Yeah, actually, I didn't even think that no one actually knew that was that was the shtick. Like, if the, the other players didn't know, then of course the shit the shit's gonna happen. <laughs> right, and and that's fine. I mean, if, if but you have to be ready yeah. if, you, if they don't know about it. You have to be ready for that sort of thing to happen. Um, and again, I don't know if that was the case. I'm just, it's, but you know, I. I, to I totally understand wanting to come up with a sort of a character arc that the other players aren't in on. Yes. But as oh, a sure. general rule of thumb, I found that ends up causing more problems than it creates satisfying awesome moments. Um. It depends on what it is and what the group of players are. Like, with the Tuesday crew... Having a yeah. sort of a uh, having a sort of secret dark character arc that like where it could lead to them betraying the party the party totally would be awesome. Yes, and everyone in that group of players would go fuck. That was great. Yes. <laughs> Although no one's tried anything like that for a very long time. Right. Maybe it's about time someone did. <laughs> All I can say is. Someday, if I if I, if I ever have the time and energy to do it, I want to run Amber for the Tuesday Crew. Yeah, because I think that group of players would be so all over Amber. The, the amount of backstabbering fuckery! Holy shit! Giving them free license to to giving us free license to enjoy our, our nastier sides. Damn, that's just so. You sure you want to do that? <laughs> Do you want to let that genie out of the bottle? <laughs> Eric, do you realize what I can do to fuck with you guys when you're doing that? Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> oh, yes, you're all backstabbing each other. Guess what? The universe is ending. <laughs> God damn it again. <laughs> you guys can... Didn't we just put duct tape on it last time? <laughs> <laughs> the really awful thing is, like, you know, it's... Uh... It's oh, the Jesus Christ. The the problem someone's is someone's gonna stick someone in the back at the friggin' like at, at like the most like pivotal moment and it might cause the universe to end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I said, God damn it. <laughs> and I know how to distract you, Eric. <laughs> Earth. There are giant mechs and orcs over there. Oh, cool. I'll go make friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, Eric. The, uh... Alexia is gonna shout at the witch fire and cause a zombie apocalypse. I'm sorry. I'm busy trying to deal with this dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that actually happened, folks. <laughs> that actually did happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't, again, wasn't in that game, but... <laughs> You should have been. <laughs> <laughs> Although, honestly, that saw, that party was like friggin' like ten people uh, at one point. I, I'm like, aware. Different players. It was huge. But, I like, just I just heard the stories about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Zenith. It, there was a large undead cybernetic, like you know, mechanica and en enhanced T Rex, effectively. Yeah, it was some sort of war piece. It was um, it was Iron Kingdoms before Hordes re was released, and we're doing the old Witchfire trilogy, which involves the a a, a scorn that that climaxes a scorn invasion of Corvus, 
Right. And we knew they had war beasts, and we knew they had pain handlers, but no one, there was no real definition as to how that worked. Right. So the game master was like, "Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a T Rex with like probes and stuff in its head that you pull and yank to to make it do stuff." Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, it was totally me breaking character, because there's no... Uh, thinking back, I don't think my paladin would have done it if I was playing a paladin. Um, but there's a giant dinosaur that I can pilot. Yes, I'm going to try. I don't care if I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't care if I just keep turning left, which is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, Eric's paladin was a little bit distracted when Alexia basically started the zombie apocalypse. Yes. The bard goes, oh shit, I know what's happening. I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> the, the, the spy goes, huh, I want to see where this is going. <laughs> the ogre and the, the, the troll can were too, or like on the other side of the um, town, sitting on the roof eating sandwiches because they just fended off an entire undead army. <laughs> <laughs> It was a giant mess from everything I understand. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember what our gun mage is doing at the time. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, the zombie apocalypse happened. <laughs> and you were driving a mechanical dinosaur. And I was driving a dinosaur. <laughs> Whee! Oh my god. So yeah, um... I'm trying to think of any sort of situation where anything like that, like this, like that, even remotely like this, has happened in any of the games I've run. Um, that I know about that I'm th I can think of off the top of my head, other than your, other than poor Tarek not being able to get the killing blow <laughs> on any giant monsters that you guys fought, <laughs> <laughs> which was entirely just the dice hating you. <laughs> it was entirely just the the. The dice not being my friend. I wouldn't say hating me, because... No, they were actually... My dice were never bad in that game, but no, they when, it, when it came to the point to get the thing, someone had slightly better dice, always. <laughs> <laughs> but can you think of anything like that that might be like that, that, I, that I'm forgetting? Mm -mm. Not off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, generally when you're running the, you're pretty good about keeping that shit in mind, and particularly people tell you that. Yeah. And your players tend to be pretty damn flexible also, like, giant, like, if that happened, no one made a stink about it, and I didn't know about the Arcan, uh, so I couldn't right. tell you. Right, and that's the thing, I'm just not aware of it. I mean, like, I don't, I've not had a lot of sort of specific character arcs for the you know, that I'm aware of, you know. Well, character arcs have had in your games. There was Tarek's uh, attempt to reclaim his throne. Right. Um, which is just hilarious, the way he kept on failing. It was downright comedic. <laughs> yep. And we played it as such. Um, it was Dr. Arcane trying to take out, uh, trying to find a way to take out um, Baron Von Toten in the Mutants and Masterminds game. Yep. We never really got much of anywhere with that. We never really got much farther than finding out Baron Von Toten was actually my great uncle. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, of course, just made it, of course, though, I have to take him down. <laughs> He's a blight on the family name. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, ch -ch 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 I mean, there was Long Fang maybe turning off the curse, but he was starting to like being a demon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one yelled at him when he took when he pulled people apart. It was great. <laughs> people started making fun of him. He turned into a giant toad. It was great. No one made fun of him anymore. <laughs> uh, was there any sort of character arcy things in the MechWare game I ran for you guys? Mm. Of note. There was there was Hannah's character and her weird nobility thing. Right. Um, she was so 
like dedicated to keeping it under wraps from the other characters. Like the players all knew about it, but the characters didn't. Um, so it was hard for us to step on her toes regarding that. Um, and then there was my characters that, who developed it is need to fuck with the clans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to be fair, that's not that unreasonable for most Intersphere characters when the clans yeah, are made. He, he took it personally, though. I was like, how dare you claim to be like the, the true heirs to the Star League? We didn't fucking leave, assholes! <laughs> yeah, Zed, I'd love to, I would love to sort of see the interactions between, like, you know, some of the, some of the, some of the clan hotheads and the Eridani Light yep. Horse. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we love the thing. Yeah, we've got a word for, what you, for, for you clan people. Deserters. Deserters. <laughs> For Kerensky and the people who left. Deserters. What? You went AWOL, fucker. You've been here trying to keep it together ever since. So <laughs> fuck you. You have no right to come in here and say that you're better than we are. You're not. I was part of Finbar's whole thing, too, because, um, like, when I first made the character, it's like, yeah, Finbar's all about his family history. You can trace it all the way back to, um, to the founding of the Star League. He he had family that was there when Kerensky retook Earth. Like, yeah. And, and the whole thing was the his mech was the one that was at fucking um the Siege of Terra. <laughs> right. Which is why he was always sweating whenever the armor got stripped off the damn thing. <laughs> well not like that that hadn't happened to that thing how many times over the centuries? <laughs> it was more to like <sighs> I know. The thing he wanted to do is to have to tell his mom that he blew up the mech. Right. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Big bad ammo cooked off. I, I, I saved part of the dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want. That's one of those things. Like, I wonder if any of if any of that mech's actual is actually part of the original mech. <laughs> I think we had determined that it was in fact a chip at the dashboard that was part of the original mech. <laughs> <laughs> and that th that was like the, the, the holy artifact. It was like the reliquary that nothing is allowed to have that chip of the dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys got pretty good at screwing with the clans. It was kind of hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when uh, the, the, the clan Jade Falcon guy goes and recites it is his history to challenge us is like, huh. Oh yeah? Well, I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> and and he did in fact top it off and was like, "Welcome back, deserters." <laughs> <laughs> you don't make friends with the, with the Fal with the Falcons. Let's just say that. Not at all. No, the 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 Falcons hated my ass. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Oh wait, you screwed with them constantly. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> Seriously, gonna let's choose the battlefield? Okay. <laughs> Get our engineers out there, dig big traps. <laughs> oh my god. Well, it definitely helped that you guys actually did capture that one that that clan that that clan that clan 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 character very early on. Yeah, yeah. And ended up, you know, basically, you know, befriending her. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the sort of impromptu duel between her and my character during that fight. Yep. <laughs> Why won't you die? Why won't this stupid Intersphere junk pile die? Zot, 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 zot. <laughs> As you're going, oh my god, this thing is ripping me to pieces! It, I've got 25 tons on it. Why am I... How is it doing this? <laughs> <laughs> How it's is like, it that fast? It was a fucking timber wolf. Yeah. <laughs> it was hilarious. You're like, okay, it's closing with me. It looks kind of like a cross between a marauder and a, and, uh, a catapult. Okay, we can handle this. And why is it shooting me already? <laughs> it's not even using its LRMs. How and then when it did finally close, why is it still using its LRMs? <laughs> so, okay, well, get under the under its LRMs. It'll be get under its guns. It'll be great. It's it's still shooting its LRMs, and they're not missing. What the? Oh crap! But yeah. Lucky hit with an auto cannon twenty saves the day. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, you know the fact that it started gauging you outside your LRM range with its lasers. You were like, "Wait, what?" Yeah. <laughs> that is not fair. That is cheating. <laughs> 
I remember announcing that over the speakers. <laughs> Eric was driving an Atlas, yes, Enith. Yeah, of course I was playing an Atlas. What else would I play? It's got a giant skull head. It's got a giant fucking cannons. <laughs> so yes, it was a it was a duel between a Timberwolf slash AK Mad Cat and a thirty twenty five Atlas. Yeah. So and Eric had twenty five like, tons on it, but was out teched and out gunned in like. Yeah. Your one advantage was you had much. You had noticeably more armor, and that was literally it. Yeah. Because it outgunned you. <laughs> and she was a better pilot than I was. Yep. Your Atlas of Toughness is what saved you. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I. But as the again, sort of the I, I, I've, I really wish I had more to sort of you know say about how to handle the sort of you know. But yeah, beyond as I said, beyond uh, you know the concept, beyond sort of the the usual sort of you know, be adaptable and you know be willing to change what your sort of character yeah, is going to end up being. Totally understand being frustrated and annoyed with. with oh God, yeah, sure. Involved. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, f fuckers. Okay, how do I solve this? <laughs> and sometimes you can't, uh, honestly. Uh, sometimes you can't. Um, like I said, my I, my first in instinct is to go friend of me. But that's me. Um, right. Or to go total dark side and start binding legendaries to your will. None of this friendly bond. None of this friendly shit. No, I tried that. Didn't work. You will be my slaves. <laughs> Ash Ketchum and Pikachu will show up and kick your ass. Or not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um,. And, but yeah, I totally, I totally grow up frustration and, and even anger about it, but what are you going to do? Like, sometimes shit just shakes out that way and you have to adapt or die, honestly, mm. or quit the game, but no one wants that. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, it's one of those things like, yeah, I, my, I guess my gut sort of feeling for that particular one is... I guess sort of, you know, maybe sort of change it so that you're not supposed to bond with all legend, like, like just bond with legendaries in general, but specific ones. And then that, so the musical one wasn't one of the ones you were supposed to bond with. Maybe. Also, like, clearly talk with everyone involved about this. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> like, that, that's, that's a given. Like, because it's not going to get fixed unless people know what's going on. <laughs> right. I mean, that's just just the way. Th I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know that eventually get the the big what the chaos one. Isn't there a chaos one? I have no idea. Like I, I don't know anything about Pokemon. I know there. I know exactly things. three legendary Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> from the original game, four technically there's, five. There's I know the, the five. Fire, the, the three big birds: the, the yeah. firebird, the, the ice pigeon, and um, and lightning crow. Right, and technically Mewtwo and Mew. Oh yeah, those two. Who are, I guess, kind of quasi. I don't. Mew is technically. I think Mew is technically legendary. I don't know about Mewtwo because he was engineered. Or I don't know. It's Pokemon. It's weird. Ah, <laughs> oh, you should conquer Mewtwo. <laughs> You should conquer Mewtwo and suddenly have Mewtwo take over your brain. It'll be great. <laughs> uh, interesting definition of the word great there, but sure. <laughs> and then they have to defeat Mewtwo, Mewtwo to free you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so, anyways, um, yeah, I think that basically does it for this topic, I mean, honestly. Yeah. I don't know what, what else to say at this point. Um, uh, if you've got follow, if you've got follow-up questions for us on it, be more, we'd be more than happy to try to answer them, honestly. Um, yes, absolutely. 
Uh, we did have one other question uh, that popped up, but it is a long one. So I don't mm. want to do the sort of you know use it for the uh, viewer question segment. Uh, Honestly, we can make a whole um, much more call it about that. Oh we're, no, I think we're going to do an entire episode on the uh, for the, for the, uh, this one. Yeah. Um, honestly, it sort of combines topics from two very early podcasts we did, I think, so. Because it's, you know, partially about, you know, talking about how to build, you know, talking about what you do for building a good classic, you know, D&D dungeon, and, like, how dragons fit into, and then the other part of it is how dragons fit into role-playing games and narrative, and, like, you know, fiction and such. And those are two separate podcasts we actually have done in the past. Yes. But I think they're both good topics to talk about again, so I think doing a podcast where we're sort of bringing the two of it together would work. Mm. So I think we'll save that for next time. Um, Absolutely. I think, that's a, I think that's a good subject, honestly. Yeah, I do too. Um, so we got a little bit of time before we have to wrap things up, though. So, yeah. Um, what else is going on, Eric, out of curiosity, gaming-wise, for you? Um... Well, you know this, but most of the podcast doesn't. I recently picked up Total War Warhammer. Right. And, of course, I'm playing the orcs, and I'm conquering and destroying everything around me until the dwarves decide to show up. Fucking dwarves. <laughs> I was about to say, conquer and destroy everything around you. And, um... So and how about the dwarves the, show up. <laughs> the, the short guys with the, with the book about, about hating people show up. <laughs> That's more the, 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 the strategy I developed for fighting rival, uh, the, the Empire and rival Greenskins was basically just... Drown them with um, with, with boys and goblins. Well, using goblins as, as a screen, while wolf riders go around and take out their their artillery. Except that doesn't work with dwarves because the dwarves will just win the fight, the straight up fight. So I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I I need to actually like tech up. I need to research black orcs and trolls and and my own artillery. I really need my own artillery. I need counter <laughs> battery fire badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can really envision like, okay, we're going up against the dwarves and we've got nothing to counter their artillery with. Wait, this yeah, is a terrible yeah. plan. And they're fucking quarrelers. Holy shit. The quarrelers are actually decent in, uh, in close combat because they're dwarves. And they shoot you from across the fucking map. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are a couple times where I had to re um, restore back to previous uh, turns because goddamn... Dwarf faction leader who uh, I can't remember his name. He's a special character ca uh, in the tabletop carried around on the shield. Uh, uh, comes down with his personal army with fuck tons of elite troops and just starts steamrolling through my lands. I'm like, ah! <laughs> Grimgore Ironhide cannot hold the, day, uh, hold the day entirely. Although there was one time when um, Grimgore Ironhide, who is my, my faction leader and my uh, in general, my primary army, ends up fighting by himself two units of hammers and a unit of dwarf warriors and routes them, routes all three. Huh. I was like, well, Grimgore can hold those guys for long enough for me to salvage what's left of my stuff and maybe I can get something to save him before he goes down and no, he routed all three. Holy shit. I have not been using him properly. <laughs> so yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with that. As frustrating as it occasionally is. <laughs> but hmm. yeah, that's been my shtick. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um... I've honestly been been mostly been doing noodling on things to do for another new RPG game, new tabletop game. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, which uh, will be happening at some point in the not too distant future. I'm thinking, hopefully, fingers crossed. Hooray! Asterisk, dagger, star, star, star. <laughs> I'm not positive when it'll happen, but, you know. Right. Hopefully. See, so. now that you've gone and named it, it's going to completely collapse in on itself. <laughs> uh, I wish you were I wish you were totally and completely wrong. 
I really hope I'm wrong too. <laughs> At any rate, um, I think that's really basically going to do it for this week. Yep. So thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I hope you found it useful. I hope we answered Word's question um, in some useful or at least entertaining fashion. Uh, Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we try to save time at the end of each episode for viewer questions. Uh, if you've got any, we please do feel free to contact us. You can either email us. Our, our email address is surlygrognards at yahoo.com. That is S-U-R-L-Y-G-R-O-G-N-A-R-D-S at yahoo.com. Or you can post them in the comments on on uh, the YouTube video. Uh, we record this show and upload it to YouTube if you're listening to us live. We have a live audience also. We record, uh, record the show live on Hi. Hitbox dot tv slash mecha dash gm we record on monday nights at 7 p.m eastern usually um the youtube channels uh youtube.com slash mecha gm with no dash in that one um yeah um if you got feedback for us we love getting feedback uh constructive criticism is huge yes so we if really you know ways that. we can make the show better things we're doing you know, etc. Constructive criticism. Please, please let us know. Uh, either that email address, YouTube comments, what have you. Um, if you've got t suggestions for us for show topics, we love those. Oh God, we love those. We really, really need those. <laughs> we have one for next time, but uh, yeah, we we could use a few few more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, honestly, it's you know not just saving us time trying to come up with a topic on our own. It also means that we're actually talking about the things you guys want to hear us talk about, and that's actually a big help. That that is yes. You generally don't want to have to listen to us rant on about whatever random thing is on our minds. I mean, sometimes it's hilarious and funny, but you know. But yeah, you can only we can only we can only we can only complain about like you know elves or. I don't know, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies so often. You know, I actually watched uh, Star Trek Beyond the other day. Yeah. Did not suck. That's what I've heard. Um, to be fair, it had a very low bar to go over. <laughs> that is also what I've heard. I've watched the first of yeah. the J.J. Verse movies and was not impressed. Uh, the second one is actively... Like intelligence damaging. Uh, I'm aware, and I have not like, watched it like yet. It causes, intel it, it causes actual like damage to your intelligence stat. Like, like, oh my god, that movie's so fucking dumb. <laughs> oh my god, I hate that movie. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, it's bad as Star Trek Five, but it's bad. <laughs> At any rate, yeah, I remember getting to a discussion with somebody about that. They were like, "Yeah, you know, Into Darkness is the worst Star Trek movie ever." Like, I, it can't be. That's impossible. I've seen Star Trek Five <laughs> twice. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't quite beat out Five for bad, but that's mostly because it doesn't have the decades of character development to shit all over. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it would have, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. At any rate, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you, people, so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye, humans. <laughs>